Can we please rise for our opening hymn? Good morning. And we're going to be singing verses 1 and 3. Good morning. It is on this day that we remember in our minds and in our hearts those who have passed before us. We are pleased to have performing for us this year the St. Norbert College Chamber Singers. Um, And our opening prayer today is in our worship aid, and we can pray this together. Lord and giver of life, we pray to you for those we love but see no longer. Grant them your peace. Let light perpetual shine upon them, and in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For those I have for I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. 
And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up on the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. The last time I rose to speak in common prayer, it was a cold February morning with a fresh layer of snow on the ground. And we gathered on that day to celebrate the life and grieve the shocking and all too soon death of a beautiful, beloved young woman, Christy. Several months later, as the river thawed and the spring foliage returned, we gathered again in this place, this time to honor the memory of a beloved mentor and colleague, Tom. At the news of his death, those who knew and loved him hurried to see one another's faces. From my vantage at the Peace and Justice Center, I could see people people hurrying across the lawns to greet and hug one another's necks. You all were still here, and you felt instinctively that the deep grief of loss, the sweet recollection of love, the hopeful reality that community continues All those things required the affirmation of your presence together. Again, hugging necks and seeing faces. This fall, as the air began to turn cooler again, Howard brought us a reflection in this same space about what it means to be a pilgrim people. And nothing makes pilgrimage so obvious to us as the loss of others along the way. In his poem, The Layers, which I have had posted by my desk all year, poet laureate Stanley Kunitz writes about continuing up the trail in his late 70s, even then turning toward the future while grieving the loss of friends. Kunitz writes, I have walked through many lives, some of them my own, and I am not who I was, though some principle of being abides from which I struggle not to stray. When I look behind as I am compelled to look before I can gather strength to proceed on my journey, I see the milestones dwindling toward the horizon and the slow fires trailing from the abandoned campsites over which scavenger angels wheel on heavy wings. Oh, I have made myself a tribe out of my true affections, and my tribe is scattered. How shall the heart be reconciled to its feast of losses In a rising wind, the manic dust of my friends, those who fell along the way, bitterly stings my face. Yet I turn, I turn, exulting somewhat, with my will intact to go wherever I need to go, and every stone on the road precious to me. In my darkest night, When the moon was covered and I roamed through wreckage, a nimbus-clouded voice directed me, live in the layers, not on the litter. Though I lack the art to decipher it, no doubt the next chapter in my book of transformations is already written. I'm not done with my changes.
in what he describes in that poem as something of a vision. Kunitz says, live in the layers, not on the litter. The smoke that trails from those abandoned campfires may consist of unfinished love, guilt, sadness, relief, words spoken too quickly, words spoken too late or too little. There's so much in that scattered wreckage on which we might dwell, trying to recreate it, trying to redo it, trying to undo it. But on this pilgrim journey, we turn, exulting somewhat. As Kunitz writes, my will intact to go wherever I need to go and every stone on the road precious to me. And there is one part of that image that with all respect to a, po to a poet laureate, I, I would like to gently counter. Pilgrimage made plain by the loss of our companions can indeed be an increasingly lonely experience. But we're never alone. New faces come alongside, creating unexpected opportunities for life and love. Beyond that, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, those who have gone before, whose faith gives us courage, and greatest of all, we are sustained by the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Comforter, who pledges never to desert or forsake us. So on this day, as we pause to look back, may we find renewed strength and hope, and may we find and appreciate continuing community. During this time of remembering, we will publicly name those from our St. Norbert College and Norbertine communities who have died this past year. A candle will be lit, signifying the deceased person's love and shining among us. After these names are read, we invite you to also light a candle in silence for someone in your life that you want to remember. The college chamber singers will provide music to reflect on during this time. And the words are provided for you in the worship aid. Tom Foss. Christy Bronken, Father Albin Vesovlowski, Opram.
Father Robert Bernard Reppin, O'Pran.
to remember them. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the growing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of leaves and in the bounty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. Amen. We're going to read together the words of Psalm 23 as our closing prayer. And I would ask as we do this uh, that we also remember Marshall Moss, uh, emeritus professor of music, uh, husband to Elaine, who is even now undergoing uh, open heart surgery and, and is in need of of grace and, and of our prayer. May I ask that we stand, if able, to read this together? <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou dost prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And now our closing song, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. <clears throat>